Okay, everybody. Welcome, 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 my sweet, sweet, gentle people. We are back at it. Uh, I am still uh, working on making these um, a little bit more like fun production heavy stuff. So I've added a few extra banners and um, doing, a, doing a few other little fun things uh, along, along the way, I think. Um, by the way, uh, I want to point out to the shirt, maybe I'll take the name tag down for just a, no, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. I want to show you guys the shirt because it's pretty much the greatest shirt you've ever seen in your fucking life. This is the best goddamn shirt in the world. Uh, my sister got me the shirt, uh, for, for the people that get that shirt. Uh, this is probably the greatest shirt that's ever been made. I think, uh, so let's do a quick check-in, we got a pretty big episode to talk about today, a lot of dense stuff to cover, so, um, I don't want to, uh, preamble too much, I know yesterday there was a big preamble, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to, to say, and if you missed it yet, yesterday, and basically I'm trying to work on creating a... Uh, live stand-up show via Zoom. I'm going to do a couple tests uh, with with the patrons. Um, so if you are on my Patreon, if you are a sustaining member of, of my work, then you uh, probably saw a post this morning. You probably saw, uh, a, a, you'll, you'll, you'll see a, a poll go up um, in the, in the Patreon, basically asking if you're, if you're down to help me do a test show uh, for 15 to 30 minutes to run through some quirks, some, uh, you know, weird shit that might happen and things that I can consider and then try to figure out a date where I can, um, do a live show and what format it would be. So I'm thinking about that. That is in the works right now. Um, so I'm still, I'm still kind of kicking that around in the back of my head along with uh, several thousand other things, as, as my head usually does. Um, but I'm doing okay. Had, a, had a, uh, a, a little bit of a challenging workout this morning. I didn't really get through all of it. Um, I just wasn't really feeling a whole lot. Uh, I wasn't really feeling it that much. But, uh, but I got through it. And I, you know, once, once I got through it and once I got up and did it, it, you know, I kind of got into the groove of just moving around and getting my brain going and waking myself up a little bit. Um, I've just been tired, you know, that's, that's really what I've, what I've been. Um, but I'm doing, doing a whole lot better. I've got, to, I've got my caffeine fix ready to go. So I am, uh, I am all set to, uh, take on the day for what the day is. Uh, that's, that's the plan, and I've got, um, uh, I've got my album that I'm working on, I've got this stand-up show that I'm, this, this Zoom, the Zoom stand-up show that I'm working on, these videos that I'm working on, um, as well as, uh, a few new Forkful pieces, as well as a few new Dispatch pieces, so more written content coming, as well as these rambly, uh, <laughs> rambly ranty content. Um, so, uh, in, in spirit of that, let us go forth and discuss our topics for today. As, uh, if you, if you caught the little banner at the very beginning of it, we are going to be talking about the general strikes that are happening all across the country right now. And I'm going to try to, I'm talking about four of the bigger ones. Um, and I'll probably talk about more about strikes tomorrow as well, by the way. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kind of go a little deeper into some of the strikes, um, and then I do that. This is one of the topics that I wanted to cover in Forkful, uh, like like the history of the the worker movement and and all that stuff. And there's so much there. There's a lot of history there uh, that I want to to talk about. Um, so uh, let us let us begin into it. The the um, right now. We have uh, strikes all across the country coming up. We've got tons of strikes that we've seen. Some are getting more attention than others. Usually, um, that's that's how it goes. Uh, but there are strikes happening nationwide. Uh, people that are being considered essential workers 
are going to uh, to battle against this corporate oligarchy uh, to fight for the rights of the average working class American. And if you are uh, if you are are for the people, if you believe in 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 freedom for the people, then you should be on the side of these strikers. You should be supporting general strikes. You should you should. Um, you, you should be behind these people for what they are trying to do um, because what they're trying to do is essentially make your lives better um, by, by showing exactly how essential they really are, right? And that's really what they're doing. They're showing exactly how essential um, these jobs are and how much this system, how much um, we depend on people to do these jobs and why we should treat them better to do these jobs why we should we, sh we shouldn't just we shouldn't just pay them pittance um or 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 not show them any respect or treat them terribly uh you know in in the midst of them doing this job so the first one i will start with is um, my city pittsburgh which is where i'm uh based and located pittsburgh pennsylvania uh they had a sanitation strike last week um the reports that i've read I'm not sure what the result of this sanitation strike is, and we might not know for a little bit um, if I find out something today or tomorrow. I will probably talk about it in, in tomorrow's videos, but um, yeah, Pittsburgh went on a sanitation strike. Basically, what they were doing is uh, they were requesting gloves, they were re re requesting masks, and hazard pay. We're in a hazard time. This is a pandemic and picking up garbage is an essential function. Like you need sanitation to run a city. You, you know, like that's what you need. Um, we don't have pneumatic tubes that, uh, that we can all throw our stuff into that take it to a centralized location for, you know, uh, to be split up um, and, and, you know, put into wherever we decide to put into. Um, you know, so, uh, we need, we need our garbage men. We need our garbage women. We need our gar, we need our sanitation people. They are essential to, uh, to, to keeping this, keeping a city running. Um, and what they're requesting gloves, masks, and hazard pay is not really over the top. Here's the thing with these strikes too, is like, they're not asking for something that's like crazy or over the top, right? It's not like we shall not work until we get suits of armor made out of platinum. Like they're not asking for something crazy, <laughs> you know? Like they're not like, give us Robert Downey Jr. suit from Iron Man 2 when he fights Whiplash for the first time. That is the only thing that we shall be picking up the garbage from. Like, they're not doing any of that. Gloves, masks, and hazard pay. Pretty reasonable reasonable things to, uh, to ask for here. Um, and like I said, they're considered essential, but they're, but they're paid like they're not, you know? Uh, out, of, um, out of all of the municipal jobs that uh, are out there, uh, sanitation workers make the, the least. They, pay, get, they get paid less than $15 an hour. Uh, and there are Teamsters that have apparently partnered with the city so that they don't have to get raises in conjunction with inflation and price increases and, and cost of living increases. You know, and that's not, that's not right. That's not right for essential workers. If they're truly essential, then treat them like they're truly essential. You know, give them, give them the hazard pay, give them gloves, give them masks, treat them properly. So, and this is what they're saying, right? They're, they're not saying that they don't want to do the job. They're not like, we're sick and tired of picking up after your, your trash and your, you know, your, your half eaten hot pockets and, and your, your, your old jizzy towels. No one cares for doing that job and we shall not do it ever again until we get Tony Stark's armor from the cinema Iron Man 3 now. Like, that's not... They're not saying they're not going to do the job. 
They just want to be safe while doing it, which again is a reasonable request. This is not that big of a deal. This is this. They're making it seem like it's this over the top request to be safe while they do their already kind of unsafe job. Like it's not a super safe job. Being 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 a, a, a sanitation worker is not a super safe job. They're on the back of trucks. They're dealing with they're, they're dealing with with waste materials. You know, like you should be taking the proper precautions, especially in the time of global pandemic, when you have a virus that can, you know, that's that stays on cardboard, that stays on plastic and metal for several days. You know, like that's it's all stuff that that you have to take into account. And Bill Peduto, um, so he rejected the masks and claims it's dangerous. This guy's a Democrat, by the way. So for all the people that are like, oh, the Democrats are, are better than the Republicans, Democrat right here, denying workers what they need to be safe doing their jobs. Uh, and he said that he the, the masks are, on, are dangerous, so we can't give you the masks, right? Here, here's, um, here's where the danger uh, lies. Um, it, uh, it lies in the lack of testing during a pandemic, which we don't have. We don't have... Uh, testing, or if there is testing, it costs too much money for a lot of people to afford, even if they have health insurance. Uh, it lies in the workers picking up somebody else's trash. And if that person is sick uh, and they throw away Kleenexes or something that they touched or whatever, then the sanitation worker gets infected and they can possibly infect their family. Uh, and now this is spreading even further. So now by not taking proper precautions that these sanitation workers are asking for pretty reasonably, uh, you have now become the danger. So really, Bill Peduto is a danger. Peduto is the danger one, dangerous one, not these sanitation workers. The second strike that we're going to talk about is the Instacart strikes. Um, now, I did some of the stuff for Instacart um, as as like side money, is and it became like and it, essentially that's what it became. It's like pocket change. Um, it's because I, I can't. My personality is not suited for me to go and be a shopper for like eight straight hours. I think I did it for like four hours maximum. Um, like a couple days a week last year over the summer, and I tried to do it again over the over the holidays. Um, and you know, you you make a little bit of money throughout the week uh, during those times. Um, but really, my my concern ended up being uh, I am. Uh, what's the cost of the gas? What is the cost of my time? And what is the cost of um, the mechanical stuff that I'm going to have to fix in my car, right? Repairs and maintenance and stuff. So uh, these guys are also considered e essential workers right now. Um, Instacart, the way it works, <laughs> it's not, I, I didn't make it, like, like I said, I made like pocket change is essentially what I made. Like, I was like, cool, I can buy a beer. Like, I don't have to worry about buying beer. Like, that's kind of the money that I, uh, that, that, you know, it's like, it's, it's a little, it's a little pocket cash. Um, they have a base pay. It's not very, it's not very great. And then they, they give you a certain percentage of the mileage that you drive, but it's only the mileage that you drive from the store to the customer's house. Um, it's not the mileage that you would drive from the customer's house to this next delivery. Right. And sometimes like one of the things I found out and really ticked me off and I called them about it and I told them about it and they were just like, yep, nothing you can really do about it. So you can just go and uh, eat a bag of dicks. No one really cares. Um, li like literally they were just like, yeah, that's what our policy is and that's what it is and we're not going to change it. So, OK, if you don't want to drive, you don't want to drive for it. Whatever. No, it's no it's no skin off our back. Right. And uh, basically, um Let's say you get you get a uh, you get a uh, a a request at, at an Aldi that's about a mile from where you are. So from where you are to the Aldi, you don't get you don't get paid. You go in, do your shopping, and then from the Aldi to the customer's house, which is another, which is like two miles, right? Uh, you get you get your you get point six 
uh, 60 cents per mile reimbursed to you. So you get, to, you know, so it's basically you made a dollar 20 off of that. And then let's say from that customer's house to the next thing is like eight miles. You get, you don't get reimbursed for that at all. You don't get reimbursed for that at all. Right. Um, and that's not, and, and the way that they, they phrase it is you, they basically you get 60 cents per mile that you drive is sort of the way that they pitch it. Um, which is super not true and uh, you get a base pay and then it's like a percentage or something like it's at the end of the day unless you're unless you're constantly picking up orders um, that are like you know over a hundred bucks or something like that you're not really I mean it's you're not making a lot of money and these guys are considered essential so the company basically said the Inst Instacart said that it would increase safety measures and procure hand, hand sanitizer and this is what three weeks into the pandemic that they said that they would do this. They, this has happened on Sundays when they said that. That's three weeks into a fucking pandemic, and you decided to say that you were going to, uh, you were going to, oh, we'll, 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 we'll help the employees now, right? These essential people, we'll, we'll help them now that they're saying that they're not going to do it. Then now, now we think we'll help them. Um. So the workers are pissed. They're like, it took you guys three fucking weeks. We've been asking for this for so long. We've been asking for this for so long to get hand sanitizer and help us out with gloves and just safety equipment. And you guys fucking wouldn't do it. You guys, treated, you know, so it's the same thing as the, as the Pittsburgh sanitation workers. They asked for the same thing. Um, and then they said the, the company, Instacart, said that they would adjust the app uh, so that they receive more consistent tips. How? That's not up to you. That's up to the customer. Like the tips are up to the customer to give you. And usually like most of the orders that I remember getting were anywhere between like eight and 15 bucks and I would get like a dollar or two in tips, right? So like if I did four or five, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go five. I think I, the, most, the most amount I did was like four. Um, if I get four orders in, in a shift, in a four hour shift, um, you know, I mean, I'm getting what, five or six bucks in tips. That's not a lot. So what are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to force people? Are you going to add mandatory tips to, to customers orders when like these are customers that are probably staying at home because they need to stay at home. They're probably not receiving paid time off after a certain amount of time. And if they are, they're working from home and they might not be making enough money. So during a time of pandemic, you're not going to take care of your workers and you're also going to force your customers to pay more in tips because you don't want to increase the base pay of your, of your fucking employees that you deem are essential or people that you need to do this job. Right, what they should do, like I said, receive better base pay, cover their bills, and cover and offer benefits. I mean, most of these jobs don't don't have any benefits attached to them at all. Um, Lyft, I know, I think Lyft offers some kind of a health care. I don't believe Uber does. Um, DoorDash doesn't, or DoorDash does after a while. But I can't imagine that it's particularly very good. Um, you know, I can't imagine that it's particularly like, like I feel like it's one of those health cares where you have it and you, and you don't have to like be penalized for it. But if you go to a hospital for something, like you just won't, like you just won't, <laughs> you, you don't really get that much coverage. You know, like you're still going to have to pay quite a bit out of pocket. Uh, so what's the point of having health insurance if that's what you're going to do anyway? So Instacart's on strike. Uh, we got Whole Foods. They're doing a sick out. I believe a sick out is happening today. Um, the day that you're watching this video, most likely. And if you're watching this video later, uh, well, I'll say this. The day that I'm recording this video uh it's Tuesday, March 31st. Um, and so they have a list of demands. Uh, let's pull up the list of demands. This is their list of demands here. 
And again, pretty fucking reasonable in my opinion. Uh, guaranteed paid leave for all workers who isolate or self-quarantine instead of coming to work. So if they feel like they need to do that, uh, they should get paid leave. Uh, reinstate health care coverage for part-time and seasonal workers. Yeah, I mean, everybody that's part-time and seasonal should have health coverage uh, offered by the company. You're, you're not paying them. You're, you're paying them virtually nothing, but you're still like, so why would anybody want to be a part-time or seasonal worker if they get paid less, they don't have a guarantee of actually having a job, uh, and they get less hours, and they don't get any health coverage or anything? So it's like, yeah, let's just keep doing this antithetical thing where we where it's like, oh, you're poor? Let's figure out ways to make you even more poor. Uh, increase FSA funds to cover coronavirus testing and treatment for all team members, including part-time and seasonal. I don't know what FSA funds are. If you do, leave a comment because I'm not sure what that is. But if it's something to cover testing, then yes. Uh, guaranteed hazard pay in the form of double pay during scheduled hours. Yeah, you should definitely do that. This is this is like unsafe times, right? Like people are people are freaking out. You know, like we're in a global pandemic. Uh, implement implementation of new policies that can facilitate social distancing between workers and customers. Sure, uh, again, r relatively reasonable. I went into a Rite Aid the other day, and they have tape like marked off six feet uh, from each other. It, it was very strange, but sure, if that's what you feel like you need to do. Uh, commitment to ensuring that all locations have adequate sanitation equipment uh, and procedures in place. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that they did say they were doing. It's like, oh, we have deep clean practices in place. And it's like, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, but maybe you should, like, if you close your store at 7, maybe you should have, like, a team of people, like professional cleaners, come in and sanitize the fucking store top to bottom um, you know, after you close early so that the next day, like, it's, you know, ready to go. Immediate shutdown of any location where a worker tests positive for COVID-19. In such an event, all workers should continue to receive full pay, pay unit, uh, the store can safely reopen. So, yeah, so that's also seems super fucking fair to me is, um, why wouldn't you? Why would, why would, why would you have somebody that tests positive of a highly commutable disease, you're freaking out that this thing is going to spread and kill everybody. That's what the media keeps saying. Oh my God, it's going to spread. There's going to be 80,000 cases. There's going to be 150,000 cases. There's 77 million cases. Like that's all they keep doing is they keep freaking out about how many cases there are and how it's going to kill everybody. And Yet, you see corporations very nonchalantly being like, yeah, there was a guy that tested positive. We just, uh, we kind of shoved him uh, into, into one of our freezers in the back room. And we, and we put this, we put caution tape around it. And he just, it, that, and that guy lives there now. Um, and and that's, a, that's how we at Whole Foods are taking care of this. Because we think of people first. Uh, it's like, what? It's a highly commutable disease, assholes. Like, if he, if that person touched a bunch of other people, then, they, like, you need to provide, now you have to provide testing for all of the people that regularly come and shop at that area. If you shop at that store and all of the employees, and you have to desanitize the entire fucking store. I mean, so what does that mean? That probably means that you might have to lose some stuff, right? Like, you, like some of the perishables might be gone. You might have to restock it. Well, oh, fucking well, I guess. Like, what, I mean, what are you going to do? Again, it's like if you think about people first, then that's what you have to do. You have to you have to eat some of your own fucking profits. And it's not even I mean, like at the end of the day, with how little you uh, these people get paid, um, how they're not taken care of, like part time and seasonal. Like that's a way to loophole to ensure that you don't have to pay people's health care. You don't have to cover any benefits for them. You don't have to take care of anything for them. So you just hire a bunch of people and you're like, oh, you're all part time. We have 400 employees that are all part-time in one fucking store. Everybody works four-hour shifts. That's all they do. And we don't have to cover fucking dick all. And we don't have to give them raises. We don't have to give them cost of living. And we don't have to schedule them more than 15 hours in a week. And everything is fine. We're making shit tons of money, right? Like, I'm pretty sure you can 
you can reduce your bottom line a little bit and still be fine. I'm pretty sure you can still afford to shop at a Whole Foods when none of your other employees can. Here's the crazy part about all this, right? There was somebody that gets tested positive at a Whole Foods. Whole Foods does not shut down. They keep going. In certain cities, if we go out past a certain time, right, like a curfew has been enacted in certain cities um, or a stay-at-home order has been enacted uh, in certain cities. So, like, you can only do essential things like grocery stores, pharmacies, um, exercise, that sort of stuff. Um, but I think mental health might be one of the things. If you go out, you get fined. And most of us can't afford any of these fines, right? Like, we go out, and they're like, oh, you're willingly spreading this disease, so we're going to go ahead and fine you. Um, Whole Foods is part of a system that is ensuring the rate of spread and gets away scot-free. Like, we know there are people that get that test positive, and they're like, okay, put them in the icebox. Everybody just go back and pretend like business is normal. Because Papa's, Papa's got a new helicopter to buy. Because they don't care about people. They care about markets and stock prices over people. That's what they care about. That's what's important to them. Greed is a deadlier virus than COVID-19. Always has been and always will be. Amazon warehouses. This is the other big one, right? This is a double hit for Bezos. It's kind of great. <laughs> We're just kind of speed bag punching Bezos' balls with these strikes. I'm, I'm into it. I'm fine with it, you know? Let's get a couple more people speed bagging those testes, you know? Let's make sure, let's make sure if, if there's any possibility uh, that there is an evil gene inside Jeff Bezos and there is a greed gene inside Jeff Bezos that he can't, he can't spread that shit around. You know, let's, let's, let's make sure that he uses a portion of his enormous wealth to have to buy uh, prosthetic balls. Is that too mean? Is that too mean? I kind of think that's a very funny image in my head. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a fucking sociopath uh, that doesn't have human emotions inside of him. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but that thought to me is kind of very funny. Uh, anyway, whatever. Let us let us move on. Uh, 50 to 200 people walked out of a Staten Island warehouse after there was a positive case of COVID-19 and they didn't shut the warehouse down. They didn't shut the warehouse down. Um, so they staged a walkout. So they just fucking walked out. Uh, what they're, again, this, these are all fucking reasonable claims to me. I just, I, like anybody that's against this stuff, like I don't get it. I don't understand Please, if you are against these strikes in somehow, like, if you have a reason, please explain it to me because I don't understand why somebody would be against something like this. Why somebody would be against, like, such reasonable requests that people are making uh, and, and why you would be on the side of a corporation that's like, but what about our market shares? You can shove your market shares up your ass is what you can do. Um... Uh, they asked for the building to be closed, sanitized, and the workers to get paid during that time. Fair, right? Um, and if you are one of those people that are like, "Oh, we're just supposed to, we're just supposed to pay you while you while you're at home, sitting on your ass, huh? What about my packages, huh? I ordered, I ordered some quality fucking headphones. I ordered, and I ordered uh, a Blu-ray edition of Dodgeball." And you're not even gonna give that to me. What, what about that? And, you're, and we're just supposed to pay you while you sit on your ass. Why do the workers need to be penalized for a natural pandemic? Why, whenever there's some kind of a natural disaster or something, the worker has to has to has to pay the price of it? Especially when when these working class people are not treated very well and paid so little why are they the ones that are getting the penalty
$4 trillion in, in corporate slush funds. We saw that last week. $4 trillion. It's trillion with a T, folks. That is trillion with a fucking T. Uh, it hasn't helped. It hasn't helped anybody except corporations. Right? And the idea behind giving corporations a $4 trillion corporate slush fund to bail them out is that corporations will get a huge bailout and then allocate it, um, allocate that wealth to the rest of the company. This has never fucking worked. This has never fucking worked. In the history of trickle-down economics, it's never fucking worked. When somebody came up with trickle-down economics, just even, even in the conception of the idea, it failed. Like, that's how, that's how terrible this idea is. What they do is they'll take that corporate bailout, they'll take that money, and they'll hide it in their tax havens and their bonds and their mutual funds and their stock and all this complicated fake bullshittery that is the, 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 the American economic system, the markets, the, the Wall Streets and the, the stock exchange. and the, the, like These are all just fake weird things where it's like well we'll move the money over here into this fund and make it into this corporate thing and we'll pull it all together over here and somebody somehow will make some money and it's like blah, 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 what that's that's what that's what it is that's how it works right now even without any of that corporate bailout shit they had enough money to take care of all of the basic human needs that we have why would the employee and the worker want to work for a company that doesn't take care of its workers? Why would you go to Amazon if they're not taking care of you? Why would you stick with Instacart if they're not taking care of you? Why would you stick with, with Whole Foods? Why would you work for a city that, that doesn't take care of you? So especially with that, with on that level too, is like if you see city workers, if you see like municipal workers all s saying, "Hey, our, the city is not taking care." Of, yeah, every citizen of that city should be behind them. Every citizen of that city should say, "Yes, fucking, we're with you." Those sanitation workers deserve better. The Instacart workers deserve better. Amazon, Whole Foods, everybody deserves way fucking better. And what they're asking for is very reasonable shit. And it's stuff that we've been yelling about for the last fucking two decades. For 20 years minimum, we've all just been like, why are you not treating us like, like, why, why are you treating us like we're trash? We're going to see more of these people. We are going to see a lot more of these true i think i think we're about to see a, a big wave of um of strikes that are going to come up um and uh if i may make a prediction of sorts uh i think our next strike is going to be uh is a healthcare strike um possibly right uh because i think right now uh healthcare workers um they like they're on the they're on the the front of the front lines of dealing with or, or getting ready to deal with all this if they have to deal with all this, right? Like we don't have, like this is a highly communicable disease. We don't have specific places um, to, we don't have like specific places to to treat um, or test this disease. We just, we just don't. So we can't put them in um, tents or just like integrate them into the hospital system as is uh, because that's, foolish why would you do that there's other people that are immunocompromised in these hospitals and if that's who that if that and that's who that upper respiratory disease hits why would you put them in the same fucking vicinity of each other doesn't make any sense um it's illogical so the question that we have to ask is what happens if the healthcare workers in america get sick are they protected? Are we prepared to take care of them as well? 
uh, if they get sick in this pandemic? Like, what happens in that? What are, what are the what are the provisions that we have put in? We don't we don't have any. That's the simple answer to it, is we don't have any provisions put into place for any of this stuff. And if they go on strike, if healthcare workers in America go on strike, if there's a healthcare strike in America next, um, I mean, this could be the levy for dedicated spaces to test and and treat this the the virus patients of the virus. You know that that can, that that would probably be the first thing that they ask for is uh, specific places, making sure we have equipment. Um, this, and it could also be a, a, a way to leverage Medicare for all in this situation. Uh, because here's the thing. If, if doctors, nurses, uh, techs, and any sort of healthcare professional get on board with the idea, I think it would gain some extra strength for Medicare for all, for universal health care, which is so fucking needed right now um, in, our, in our society. We, we have people that do have health, health insurance that still can't afford to go take this test. And, you know, again, it doesn't even matter. Like, it, it, even if you can, even if you can't afford to take the test, if, if you have to be furloughed for two weeks, there's a good chance that your company, your corporation is not going to help you fucking pay for it, right? That slush fund that they got is not being reallocated to help the workers. It's going to fucking, you know, pad the ass of a fucking rich person is all it's doing. So the healthcare strike... If that comes next, um, it wouldn't just be doctors and nurses, right? Like that's kind of what we think that the healthcare system is, that it's only doctors and workers. Like it's far more than that. Uh, it's it's techs, it's clerks, it's environmental staff, it's administrative staff. There's a lot of janitorial staff. Like that's a lot of people that work in the healthcare industry or or in the periphery of the healthcare industry, right? Like so. So, and most of these people that aren't doctors or nurses make like $25,000 a year or less usually. Um, so, you know, these are, again, these are like low to maybe min, middle income kind of people, maybe. Um, I've made $25,000 a year and I can tell you that it's fucking not a lot. <laughs> like... Like I made twenty five grand a year, and I still was broke out of my mind. Like, <laughs> like I made I made no money. It it's still like no fucking money, you know. So even if you even if you work in the medical industry as like something in the in within like a hospital or a healthcare thing, like you're still making fucking chump change. So, you know. Now, the thing is, the healthcare providers risk their lives, so it should be reciprocated, right? Like, they're on the, they're on the front of the front lines, and they're, they're out there fighting this disease. They're out there saying that this is the problem, right? They're out there saying, here's, we are going to put, we are going to be out there going face-to-face -face with people that have or might have this virus. We don't know because it's asymptomatic, and um, we, we are going to try to help these people, that is our that is our ethical oath that we have taken, um, and if we're not going to take measures to protect them, then again, why would they want to be part of that system? Why would they want to be part of a system that asks them to put their lives on the line, but doesn't reciprocate it? Isn't that the definition of a toxic relationship? where you do a bunch of stuff for a person and they do nothing for you in return or they continue to demand more like that's a toxic relationship now i know there's some people that are like well you can't ask doctors and nurses to just stop working chris that's crazy that's ridiculous well they already have there's a bunch of fucking doctor's offices that aren't taking patients that are specifically only taking like emergency cases you know, so like if you have like a tummy ache or if you have a mild flu or, or not mild flu, but like a, a cold or, you know, a runny nose or if you have headaches or what, what have you, like, okay, too bad, so sad is kind of the way that they look at it. Um, 
but they have they do have an ethical responsibility to do no harm. Uh, that's an ethical responsibility that they have to do no harm, right? And I know some people will make the argument that if they go on strike that they are going to be doing harm because they're not going to be at these hospitals, they're not going to be at these clinics taking care of people. Well, one, I, I would I would uh, refer you back a minute ago when I said some of these offices are like not taking people. Um, so do no harm, but shut down your clinics and don't take any new patients. How is that, how is that not going against do no harm? Um, but I will make an even stronger argument because uh, when people are dying, uh, we saw a young kid die uh, last week from this virus because he, the kid didn't have health insurance or the parents couldn't afford the test. So he died. Um, I'm not sure about the specifics of his condition. He might have been immunocompromised. He might not have been immunocompromised. We have a crony healthcare system um, that doesn't care about human life. And they're not taking care of this pandemic. Um, and they're not ready to take care of their doctors and nurses. The longer this thing waits, the longer the system will probably get overwhelmed. So a strike might be the best way to ensure for the long run that they do no harm because the demands of the strikes could be all of the things that, that a governing body with, um, with a logical healthcare system and a logical plan to deal with crises like this should have put into place. You can, if, if the healthcare workers go on strike next, uh, that could be the demand that, that they ask for. And I'm sure there would be some fucking right winger and, and probably Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden that would come out and make some claim about how dangerous it is and so on and so forth. And sure, like I said, I've already made my cases for why it's not. What's more dangerous than a healthcare strike that asks for responsible measures to be taken to deal with a crisis in the, log in the most logical and effective manner is a system uh, that has no plans in place, that has no preliminary way to deal with this, other than everybody stay at home and hope your bank accounts don't run dry. <laughs> it's not a fucking plan. It's not a fucking plan. But if the healthcare industry does go, um, does go to, to strike, I think that will light a fire under this entire country's ass because that's, a, I mean, that's a lot of shit, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, but like we need ventilators, we need masks, we need all of this equipment that needs to be made. Um, and we have a bunch of people that that have the skills and the factories that that know how to do this sort of stuff that aren't doing it uh and there are people that are kind of mobilizing in order to push the corporations in order to do that in order to like create these things in order to manufacture these things um so it, i think it would kind of light the fire and with all of the strikes that we're seeing from essential personnel so far I would not be surprised if we saw some kind of healthcare strike. I might be wrong, but you know, I I I think that we're 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 kind of underway because people are getting. There's a lot of anxiety and fear, and I think this anxiety and fear is now going beyond just general panic, um, and hyper 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 hyperbole. Um, I lost that word for a minute there, but it's going into, it's going into some action, you know? Um, so, so yeah, we were kind of, I think a lot of people were just kind of waiting to see what would happen with, uh, with actions like the emergency UBI, the direct checks to Americans, the, what we're going to do about this corporate bailout situation that's been given. And, and then once all that stuff played out, we were like, okay, fuck it. Let's just, let's go into action. Let's, let's fucking do some shit. 
Let's really take, let's really get, get this shit underway. And now that's what we're doing. Strike after strike after strike. And we're going to see more of them. And we're going to see more of them too. All right, people. Um, that is the episode. This is a little bit shorter. Yesterday we had a super long one. So I hope you guys don't mind that this was a super, not a super short one. It, it was still over 45 minutes. <laughs> Um, tomorrow I'm going to talk about more strikes, like I said, and more, more of these kind of worker protests that are going across the country, um, and possibly a few other things. Um, I've stuck to two today uh, because I felt like that was probably what... Uh, but this, this was pretty dense. This was pretty dense. Um, as always, these I will probably pick one of these and put them up on the audio thing. That's another change that I talked about yesterday. Um, so I'm mentioning that again today. I'm, I'm reducing the amount of audio content that goes up just because of um, cost and space. A, in order for me to have the server space that I need, I'm going to have to evaluate it uh, next month um, to kind of look at how much space I'm actually using and reduce, reduce my, my, my um, uh, subscription on Libsyn. Uh, you know, right now it's a little bit more expensive than I would like it to be in the circumstance that we are in. Um, but I am going to be putting up a lot more content throughout April, and I'm going to assess what I need to assess in regard to that. So because of that, um, I will probably choose one of these segments that I throw up, because what I do with these, this is a full long episode, and then I chop them up into clips. Um, and I throw them up on the YouTubes and the Facebooks as well. And I might choose one of those and put them up on um, as the audio podcast version as well so so there'll be limited content on the audio podcast versions um i know a lot of people are struggling a lot of people are in um financial struggle financial uh, tough situation uh so um you don't have to donate or anything or become a sustaining member to get access to any of these videos this is all going to go up for free um, and will always be available for anybody to enjoy um, the only thing that i ask is if it's possible for if you can give it a like give it a share and make sure you're subscribed to this channel to get updates make sure you're getting updates from me because when you talk about topics like general strikes uh healthcare strikes and things of that sort <laughs> it's not particularly uh shown to a lot of people it's not particularly topics that uh, that the establishment wants you to cover, wants you wants people to see, um, you know. So uh, I would I would say uh, please share and like this content. That is the big thing that I ask of people. Uh, but if you can and if you have the means to uh, and you would like to donate, um, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Um, that's just for the Patreon, but if, like, that's where, let's put it this way, if you join the Patreon, that's where the information about the Zoom test show is going to be, where I'm going to work out the kinks, um, and trying to take a poll and gauge an interest for that, um, and then I'm going to try to figure out how to set up an actual show uh with with like a limited number to see if i can make that work and if i can make that work maybe i'll i'll do i'll do a little bit more of that it'll give me a lot more focus uh in in what i'm trying to achieve and what i'm trying to do because that's part of the struggle that i'm having personally is uh is is a sense of focus um and and motivation in order to keep creating as much as i can um, keep myself engaged and not burn out while doing it because I think I think having that kind of motivation keeps me keeps me grounded keeps me engaged keeps me doing the thing that I need to be doing keeping myself keeping my head on straight and headed in a direction that I feel is where I need to head to um, anyway uh, but if you want to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member uh, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com 
slash donate. Uh, everybody that's already become a patron, everybody that has already made a donation and a contribution, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, every little bit helps. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate <laughs> every, like even the tiniest amount little bit, um, helps, helps me get, you know, uh, to, to get through this, this kind of crazy time that we're in. Um, and, uh, hopefully we'll get back to doing a, you know, live shows, live entertainment. Um, there are a ton of people, um, this is, this is sort of the last thing that I'll say before I wrap up for the, for the evening. Um, there are a ton of artists right now that are streaming live, that are creating content, that are putting up uh, live concerts for free um, in an effort to help other artists and, and not, not just themselves. Um, so I'll, I'll name a couple people. Sorry, my eyelashes, I think, went right into my eye in the middle of me saying that. That's so fucking crazy. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, look, there are a ton and ton of artists that are um, not just trying to create content because it's a creative outlet and it helps keep them sane while giving you something to enjoy during your time in solitude and quarantine, um, but also because they are doing it to help other artists um, and, you know, make sure that when all of this is over, we don't lose art. We don't lose, you know, a way to keep ourselves going, uh, a way to critically think, a way to engage the world around us, the way to open our minds and connect it to something more beautiful and bigger um, than, than, than just, you know, the day-to-day -day minutia um, to get out of this system, to challenge authority, to give us something to fight for, to inspire us. There are a ton of artists doing that. Uh, to, to just to name a few, I know Ron placone has been upping his content. Uh, Graham Elwood, somebody that I really like. Lee Camp, Eleanor Goldfield is amazing. Um, Lori Creek is doing uh, a live concert tonight. Uh, they're, they're doing a live concert, uh, so make sure you check that out. Uh, Amy, Amy, mm-hmm, Amy, mm-hmm, uh, she's doing live shows. Jeremy Kaywood uh, is doing live shows. When Particles Collide, these are all amazing bands that I think everybody should listen to. Uh, Old Game, Old Game does my intro theme songs uh, because they're fucking incredible. Um, uh, Pio Vincent, Vincent Didiano, my good friend, he's doing uh, more movie and television reviews. My buddy Mark Viola is gonna be live streaming and doing a lot more videos. Please support these people. The, the grassroots artists are the ones that need the most amount of support. Okay, Jerry Seinfeld is going to be fine. Trevor Noah and Jeff Dunham and his fucking puppets, they're fine. They're going to be fine. Okay, I'm pretty sure Jeff Dunham is, I, he's probably losing his mind and probably has created an army of puppets by now. I don't know. I don't fucking know. But whatever. But you understand my point. My point is the small artists are the ones that need your help. The DIY on the ground artists are the ones that need your help. The DIY on the ground um um, um, venues and venue owners are the ones that need your help. Jim Bryan, that's another one. Church of Satire Comedy Club. The Robin Theater. I know Dylan's doing some really cool, interesting things uh, on, on the Robin Theater page. Uh, so so please go support these people. Please, please, please engage their content in some way. That's that's all I'll ask. Um, that is That is sort of the way that we can... Uh, support these communities and make sure that when we are out of all of this, when we are through uh, and onto the other side, uh, there is still uh, a vibrant, vivacious, lively arts community that thrives because of you. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's the <laughs> final little note that I wanted to say. My final little pedestal uh that i that i wanted to get on here um uh like share subscribe if you can donate please donate if if not i will see you tomorrow uh we are going to continue talking about uh these strikes we are going to continue talking about um a a bunch of interesting topics and uh and, and please leave comments too i'm 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 always happy to have a, a dialogue 
uh, either while while you're watching these videos um, or afterwards. Like if you don't if you don't catch these videos live and you still leave a comment, I'm still gonna see it and I'm still gonna respond to it. I do my best to do that all the time. And and for real for real though, I don't know how long this robe's gonna last, you guys. Until I can find a summer robe. Uh, and maybe in about a week, I think this robe is going to, uh, not be a part of the live show because, uh, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little sweaty right now. I'm a li I'm just a little sweaty right now. So, all right, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for getting into it. Stay taboo. See you on the road, guys.